7. During an argument, Henry Lee Lucas stabbed his own mother. She was a violent prostitute. She had a heart attack and died because of it. On many occasions, Henry Lee Lucas's mother forced him to watch her have sex with men. Later on in his life, he initially confessed to having killed 60 people, a number he raised to 3,000. His honesty was questioned. An investigator who interviewed Lucas several times concluded he had probably killed about 40 people. The film that's based on his confessions is the harrowing Henry portrait of a serial killer. Henry Lee Lucas's killing spree went on for 23 years, beginning in 1960. He died of a heart failure in 2001. The disturbing drawing I'm about to show you is created by him, and it's certainly a drawing you'll never forget. Are you ready? Six. Danny Rowling was known as the Gainesville Ripper. In May 1990, during a family argument, he tried to kill his father. His father survived but lost an eye and one of his ears. Then, just three months after that, Danny Rowling brutally murdered five students. He broke into their apartments when they were sleeping. Danny Rowling said his motive to kill was to become a superstar, like the serial killer Ted Bundy. The movie Scream was actually based on Danny Rowling's killings. Rowling was executed by lethal injection in 2006. The drawing I'm about to show you is created by him. It will haunt you. Are you ready? Five. Alfred Gaynor said he was totally innocent while his mother lived. Then when she died, the truth came out. He was a serial killer who violently killed nine women over three years during 1995 to 1998 in Springfield, Massachusetts. Alfred Gaynor often posed the murdered bodies in grotesque positions just to shock whoever found them. And sometimes they were discovered by the victim's young children. Alfred Gaynor blamed his actions on crack cocaine. He said, for an addict, crack cocaine is your first and last love. Now here's a drawing of his. And here's another he created. Four. There was a guy whose dream was to become a member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. He suffered an accident and his dream ended. After 15 years of marriage, he divorced. And starting in 1990, he killed eight women over the next five years. Truck driver Keith Hunter Jesperson became known as the Happy Face Killer because of the smile he included when writing to the media. He craved attention. He strangled his victims, which was the same killing method he did to animals when he was a kid. Keith Hunter Jesperson said this about his victims. It was their fate to die in my hands, like a car accident or illness. In another letter, he offered a self-start serial killer kit, teasing the public with his own brand of sick humour. In 1995, he was sentenced to a minimum term of 30 years before being eligible for parole. The graphic piece of art he made that I'm about to show you will never be able to be removed from your memory. So are you sure you want to see it? I said, are you sure you want to see the drawing? Okay then.
3. John Wayne Gacy was an American serial killer executed for handcuffing and murdering 33 boys and young men between 1972 and 1978. He felt no remorse or guilt for his sadistic torturing, choking and murdering. He didn't look at his victims as people. He led a double life, helping out at charitable and political events within the community. He even hosted street parties for friends and neighbours. And he even dressed up as Pogo the Clown, entertaining children at local hospitals. All that while secretly committing murders. He became known as the Killer Clown. Most of the victims were found buried in the crawl space under his house. During his 14 years on death row, Gacy took up oil painting. His favourite subject? Clown portraits. He once wrote on this piece of art. Clowns can get away with murder. This is a self-portrait he did which is bold and confident. What creeps me out with this drawing is the eyes. He also did this disturbing Snow White's picture. This one's kind of worse, with no eyes. This next photograph is rather creepy. It's John Wayne Gacy holding a portrait he created of Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Two, the BTK Strangler. BTK stands for Bind, Torture and Kill. The murderer Dennis Rader chose his victims carefully, stalking them for days and weeks, learning their routine, then carefully plan his attack and carry out his kill. He killed 10 people between 1974 and 1991. He got caught by asking the police if they can trace a floppy disk. And when they said, no, go ahead, send it in, Dennis Rader, who's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, sent the police his floppy disk. And they managed to get all the necessary information on the disk to find him. The police lied so they could trap him. Dennis Rader received 10 life sentences. Here's two revealing drawings he created. This Satanist received 13 death sentences. Richard Ramirez carried out home invasion murders which were beyond horrific. He was known as the Night Stalker. The weapons he chose to use, hammer, handgun, machete and a metal tire lever. After hearing his conviction, Richard Ramirez flashed a two-fingered devil sign to photographers and said, Evil. Richard Ramirez was on death row for more than 23 years. In 2013 he died at 53 from liver failure. He tortured 25 people and murdered 13. The following drawings he made are unnerving. Like, comment and subscribe. Tell me about other real life horror stories that you've come across. Here's some of my other videos.